Now we're going to take a look at creating layered materials, uh, which is one of the really cool parts of the advanced material editor. So let's go ahead and just load in a standard terrain. I'm just going to reposition the camera. And let's double click on our surface to open up the advanced material editor. And if you take a look, we're using just our default surface, which is a simple material. And we can see all of our different layers are going to be displayed uh, in this window right here. So if we take a look at the left, we have the ability to add layers and delete layers. Uh, we can also store them, and what that will do is save a copy in these two previews right here. Uh, so if you don't want to actually just save the material itself and you just want to have it on hand, uh, you can just store that and then at any time you can load that into any one of the layers uh, that you have defined. And that will also save multiple layers and not just one specific layer. So you can save an entire material uh, within those preview settings. And I'm going to start out by loading in another material, uh, something we can work with. And I'm just going to use one of the included ones. So I'm going to double click to load in a material. And we can select something from rocks. and we're going to select our Desert 2 and click OK. So now we can see this material layer showing up, uh, but we currently don't have anything else uh, to add to the top of that. So I'm going to select Add Layer, which is going to bring up our browser again, and we can select another material to add on the top of that. I'm going to use our brown rock, because that'll show up in a good contrast between the two, and click OK. Now if we take a look at the surface, you can see we're in an overall surface, uh, which we can give a name whatever we want. Uh, by default it's using our brown rock, which is the second one we loaded, uh, which has ended up creating that tree. Uh, but you notice that we are still working with simple materials. Now we also have a couple other options. If we take a look at the right, you can see we have an up and a down. And this will allow us to move our different layers up or down, depending on where we want them to be positioned. Now we can see these different settings. And we also notice that we get a new option called Alpha Boost. What this allows us to do is adjust our transparency of our above layer to our previous layers so our brown rock currently has an alpha boost of negative 50. We can increase that up to about negative 1 and now we entirely see our first material and if we take a look at the preview uh, we can see our brown rock and we really can't see our desert. If we increase that even higher uh, we're really not going to notice much of a change. So once we're in the negative values around one, negative 50 is going to be half uh, but we can easily adjust all the way down and just adjust our blend between these two materials. I'm going to set that to negative 50. And we also have a new tab, the Environment tab. So let's go ahead and click on that. The Environment tab gives us a lot of control over our layer and currently our top layer. Because if we click on Desert 2, we're not going to see that environment. Click back and go to the Environment tab. Now you can see we can adjust based on altitude, slope, and orientation. So let's just take a look at our overall render right now, in our preview. And let's take a look at our first setting, which we have altitude range. Now currently, our range of altitude is set by object. And that gives us a negative 1 to a 1 for our altitude range. If we change this to absolute, then we have a specific value based on the actual size of our object and material. You can see that our top right now is 4.92 meters and our bottom is negative 0 0.09. And then we also have a by material option which will give us the same effect where we have negative 1 to positive 1. So we can adjust these either by an absolute value where we can type in an actual meter of how high we would like our surface to be. 
or we can use just the by object mode which will give us an overall altitude range and I'm going to stick with by object right now and we can take a look and adjust our altitude range I'm going to pull up our bottom value and what that's going to do is only create our surface at higher altitudes. So now if we take a look at our preview render, we can see the brown rock showing up on the top surface, but on the bottom it's not showing up at all. So we can adjust that altitude and bring that down further if we need. This also works with our alpha boost. So if we change this to zero, now we're really going to see that brown rock showing up and no blend between the two. And then we can adjust our altitude range to fit exactly where we want this material to be. So we can go in the negative values or start bringing down our top altitude range. And now you can see that the top of our surface has our desert showing through, uh, but our brown rock is only showing up at this specific altitude range. Now we also have two settings underneath that to adjust how we blend these materials together. And I'm just going to zoom in so we can see the edges of our terrain a little bit better than the edges of our materials. And what we have is a fuzziness top and a fuzziness bottom. And basically our top is going to be the top of our surface and the highest point of altitude. And the bottom is going to be the bottom point of altitude and this sharp line that we have along the bottom. Now what we can do is adjust our fuzziness and let's just adjust our bottom. We'll bring that to 30% or around 30%, and now we can see a nice blend between the two surfaces. We can reduce that if you want uh, just a slight blend. We'll bring that down a little bit further. And now we can just see a very soft blend between our two surfaces, and we can also do that on top. So we can increase the fuzziness on our top. Let me take a look, and now we can see, instead of seeing that very sharp line, we see a nice blend between our surfaces. And overall, it looks really good. And depending on how much blend you really want, uh, it just depends on the fuzziness amounts. Now we also have a couple other options, our slope constraints and our orientation constraint. And these work very similarly. So what I'm going to do is just increase our overall altitude range. So that way we're covering the entire object. But now let's base this on slope and we have our slope range at negative one to positive one. So we have our steep slope and our flat slope and we also take a look at the fuzziness we can adjust those values based on steep and flat uh, just as we did with the fuzziness for the altitude. So if I only want this surface to be available on specific slope ranges we can just adjust this value. Let's take a look and now we can see that our brown rock is now showing up on more flat surfaces rather than on steeper slopes. And we can do the opposite effect by pulling that down. And it really depends. You just kind of want to adjust it until you get it to the right value. And now we can see that brown rock is showing up on the steeper slopes and not on the flat areas at all. And then we can adjust our overall fuzziness on these different values just by increasing the percentages. And now we can see a more even blend between the two surfaces. And if we take a look at the overall render, uh, despite the fact that these uh, little bits of shadows are showing up, and that has to do with the overall resolution of our standard terrain, if we were to increase the resolution, uh, those different artifacts will disappear. Uh, but if we take a look at the material, uh, we can see how that's nicely blending together in our specific areas. And we have it only showing up on certain steep slopes. And then on the flatter areas, we see that desert material. Now the sizes of these materials are a little large, so we don't see the total crispness. And it doesn't look perfect, but it gives you a good idea of what we can do with this. So let's take a look at our last option, which is our orientation constraint and I'm going to increase our slope range all the way. So now we're covering our entire material once again. And what we can do now is just have this material show up only on a specific angle. So we'll adjust our orientation 
We could do about 180 degrees. And now we want to adjust our tightness and how much we're showing on that specific angle. So if we take a look, what we can see is that we're only showing this material on this side of our terrain. And we can see that wherever the areas go up, it's just basically showing in those specific areas. And the more we adjust the tightness, the more we're constrained to whatever orientation degree we have set. So if I increase this to around 80, and we take a look, uh, we're really not going to see too much of this material at all. I'm going to decrease that value. And we can take a look. And now we can see it sort of sp spread over uh, various parts of the surface. And then as we adjust our orientation, we adjust at which specific areas and degree of our terrain it's going to be populating. And now we're covering more of this side. And then we can adjust the tightness if we just want a smaller amount covered with that material. And then our fuzziness is an overall value. Instead of having two separate values, we just have one. So we can increase the fuzziness to blend that together. And we can just take a look. And now we can see it only affecting a specific parts of our object. So let's just go ahead and render that and take a look. So we can see overall it looks very good. The fuzziness between our objects is set uh, to a good value where we don't have any real sharp edges. Uh, but you can see that we're really only on one specific angle that we're creating these different objects. Because if we go behind, we don't see any of that brown rock at all. Uh, some in little places where we're starting to jet up. But that's because we have the same sort of geometry that we have on the right side. And then it's creating along that angle. And we can use all of these settings together. Uh, we could adjust the slope and the altitude range. And that way we're using uh, multiple settings to define exactly where we want these other layers of material to be. And we could just set that placement very easily. And what we could also do is add on additional layers. And each of those also have their own environment tab. So let's go ahead and add a new layer. And let's add our sand and click OK. I'm going to change our alpha boost to 0. And that way, we can see the entire material. We can also take a look. We have our environment tab. And I'm going to decrease our altitude for our sand. And now we just see it at the lower amounts. We might need to decrease that value a little more. So we can still see bits of the desert showing up. But now we can see that sand starting to creep in, along with our brown rock and our desert. And then we can just adjust the fuzziness to make those blend together. And it's just a really easy way to combine all of your different materials. And using the environment tab uh, is just a fantastic way to specify exactly where you want your material to be. Uh, rather than some of the older settings that we used to have. Uh, but we can see overall this looks pretty good. So what we can also do, if we just go back up to our layers, and we, we can see that we have these little markers on the right. What this will allow us to do is change the color of our surface for referencing. So if we're working with a very complex material where we have some of the colors are kind of the same, and it's really difficult to tell exactly which materials are which. We can override the actual material with a specific color. So I'm going to click on our sand first in our little marker. And we can right mouse click to select a color. And I'm going to select blue. And our next one, we can go ahead and click all the way down. So now we have three different colors being created. And now if we take a look in our preview, uh, we can really see each one of those materials separately. And now we know exactly which is the sand, because we can see the blue. We can see exactly where the desert is at, because it is showing up as green. 
and then our brown rock is showing up as more of a pinkish purple color. So by looking at this we can tell that our brown rock might need a little more fuzziness. So we're going to increase the fuzziness values of our altitude and now we can see those sharp lines start to disappear. And we can just adjust these values while in this mode to really tell exactly where it is we need to have everything and so that it looks correct. And like I said, this is really good for working with materials that are the same color and you really can't tell where they're at. So we can just turn those back on just by clicking on those colors and now we'll render correctly again as our full material. And now we're going to be taking a look at mixed materials. And I just have a standard terrain loaded in and we just have the default surface. Let's go ahead and open up the advanced material editor and I'm going to check mixed material. And now what we need to do is define which materials we would like to mix together. And we can either load in uh, the materials already in view or we can create our own. I'm just going to load in some of the ones that are already available. So I'm going to double click on our surface and we can just load in a couple of different ones. And under rocks we're going to select chipped and click OK. And that's going to be our first material. And our second material, I'm going to double click and load in. And let's pick something a little bit of a different color. And we can go down here and select soil and click OK. So now we have two layers that are both connected. And they are making up one mixed material. So if we click on the top, we can see we have a mixed material. And then within our mixed material, each one of these are simple materials. What we can also do is mix these ones as well. So we can have one mixed material with several different mixed materials, all creating one specific overall material. Uh, but let's just take it one specific one right now. And when we're clicked on the actual mix material, we can see that we have a materials to mix tab and an influence env environment tab. Now what we can do is swap these different materials. We can also change their independent scales to each other. If you feel that one is maybe uh, a little bit larger or too large for the other one, uh, you can always just change the scales and that way they'll independently be different. And we also see a Material 1 and a Material 2 option and a percentage. Right now it's around 50%, which is an even blend between our two surfaces. So really what it's doing is very similar to our alpha that we had before, where it's just kind of mixing either one or the other. Uh, but in this case, it is a little bit different uh, because the powers are not set the same. Once we reach a very high value, you can see we're extremely towards material 2 and there's really not a whole lot of in-between. So let's change that back to 50% and we're equally blending between the two surfaces. So if you want to just blend two different materials together, you can just leave those default options. Uh, but we have some really powerful features to allow us to adjust the overall distribution. And if we take a look at distribution of materials 1 and 2, I can right mouse click on this and go to edit function. And now we have a distribution output node and we could connect a fractal node to that. Now this fractal is going to determine exactly where material 1 goes and material 2 goes based on white and black coloration. So we can change our wavelength, make it a little bit smaller. We'll go to 0.1 and I'm going to increase our gain. And that way we don't have so many in-between values, we either have material 1 or material 2. If we have a lot of gray area, then there's a lot of blending in between, and it really depends on what it is you want. But I'd like to see a nice sharp cutoff, or at least a, a good gradual amount between the two textures. I'm going to click OK. And now if we take a look at the preview, we can see both of our materials uh, showing up, uh, but distributed in the way our fractal node function is set up. So we can see in this case we have black being 
material 1 and white being material 2. We could also swap that if we'd like to work the other way. And we can also set up an overall filter for this. So we could adjust this specific image with a filter, uh, either custom or loaded in. And then we could basically set whatever we want for the distribution. We could link this to a variety of different uh, options and also uh, maybe other fractal nodes that we have connected. If you're working with a procedural terrain, you can copy functions from that procedural terrain and paste them into here. And that way everything can be lined up and uh, look very similar. I'm just going to kind of zoom in here. And what I want to do is just lower down the scales of each of our materials so we can see them a little bit better. And right now we're working with a very small terrain, uh, just that default size. Uh, so the scale of some of these materials is showing up uh, quite large. We can really see that bump map, uh, but it doesn't quite look like the preview and how it should look. So we can reduce that amount, let that re-render. And if you need to, you can adjust the overall scale as well. But once you start adjusting that overall scale, it'll also adjust our distribution. Because right now, these two scales that we have set for material 1 and material 2 are independent of our scale distribution function. So we can scale down these materials uh, within each of the defined areas, uh, but the actual distribution is still exactly the same unless we change either our overall scale or our scale of distribution. So if we felt maybe this should be a little bit larger, we can change this up to 2. And now we'll see much larger patches of specific materials, rather than uh, little tiny bits here and there that are being populated. If we move on, we can take a look and we can see we have material mixing method. And this gives us the ability to blend our materials uh, a little bit differently. And right now we have it on simple blend. And then we have a smooth blending strip. And this works just like the fuzziness did uh, in our environment tab, where we can smooth out the overall progression and how these are blending together around their edges. So that way we don't have any really sharp edges. Uh, we can set this smooth blending strip to be a little bit higher of an amount. And then we can see that already showing up and it looks a little bit better because we don't have those extremely harsh lines between materials. Now we also have these other blending options. We have a simple blend, which is currently set, uh, but we also have a full blend option. And what this will allow us to do is blend together our materials, but if we have uh, a bump map that's higher than another one, uh, it will show up like that instead of them blending together. And where the bumps will be equal, instead we can have uh, certain areas, if there is a much higher elevation and higher bump, then the other surface, then that will show up and be reflected uh, within that without it actually fully blending together. You'll also notice more of a, a rounded area uh, for where it's blending uh, rather than uh, just a complete and simple blend. And a lot of that also has to do with our gain setting that we have in here where we have our gray values. Because if this was exactly just white and black, uh, then a lot of these mixing methods aren't really going to apply. And our next option is full blend cubic map. And we can take a look uh, at the differences, which really only show up subtly. Uh, but basically, a full blend is, uh, in the cubic map is basically the same as the linear, except it will balance out our bump. Uh, so if our bump maps are one's really, really deep and the other one isn't, uh, they will blend together and sort of create an even value. Uh, cover will allow us to co just completely cover the other material uh, without any sort of blending uh, in between. And you can see that our smooth blending strip isn't really affecting this at all. And all we really see is a very sharp line uh, on the outside of our material. And we can see that showing up uh, just along the preview in specific areas. And the cover mode will uh, not blend together our color, but it will blend together our bump maps. 
so we don't have to worry about those being too far off because of course we wouldn't want any major separations between our surfaces. And our last option is color and lighting blend only. And we can take a look at that. And this will basically only take from Material 2 its color and lighting options. All other settings will be used from Material 1. And if you take a look at the preview, you can really see that all of those bumps are showing through uh, from Material 1 onto Material 2, and we really don't see the bump map at all, or any of the highlight modes, and all of that is overwritten when we have color and lighting blend only. So let's change this back to a simple blend. We can take a look at our render. We're going to move on to the Influence of Environment tab. And what we want to do is just go ahead and check this first op distribution of materials dependent on local slope, altitude, and orientation. We can go ahead and check that on. And what I also want to do in this uh, current setting is just reset this function that we have for our distribution. And that's because I want to largely control uh, where our materials are placed based on all of these different settings. And if we take a look and let that render, uh, we can see that overall change. And now what we have is our influence of altitude. And this is asking us whether material 2 appears at high altitudes or low altitudes. And then we can adjust the overall influence of that. So is the altitude influence very strong, or is there barely any altitude influence at all? I'm going to make this strong. And what we have right now is a material 2 appearing at high altitudes. So if we take a look at our materials to mix, material 2, we can see is that much lighter one. And that is the one that is appearing at our higher altitude. And we can see that showing up already within the preview. We have a much lighter values around the top. And then of course, our material 1 towards the bottom. And if we take a look at the render, uh, we can see that a lot better. But we just have this higher part of the mountain, entirely material 1 or material 2, sorry, and the material 1 being the soil on the bottom. And then we could also change that so material 2 appears at low altitudes. So we can basically swap them uh, just by changing that setting. Uh, but I always found an easier way of just changing those out. It's just to go to materials to mix and just swap them that way. And that way you're not affecting uh, the majority of the settings. Uh, because we have a lot of these that are dependent on material, uh, material 2 uh, being on steep slopes or flat slopes. And uh, it's just a good idea if you have the initial setting and you know, eh, maybe I want that one on top and not the other one. Uh, it's just easier to swap them rather than uh, to change these settings. So we can take a look and we also have an influence of slope. And that way we can determine whether it's appearing on steep slopes or flat surfaces, and this is currently for material 2, which is our soil. So do we want this showing on slopes? We can adjust the influence of that. And we can see once we turn it up to a really high value, it kind of covers the entire scene. And I'm going to reduce our influence of altitude. Let that re-render. And we could set maybe on steep slopes, and we could see that show up. And now we can really see the material on the steep slope areas. And on the rest of it, we can see our other material. And then we can also adjust our overall influence of orientation. So depending on our specific areas and where we want it to be populated, based on a, a certain value, we can take a look. With a value of 51%, uh, we can see it more on one side uh, than the other. And it is sort of similar to our orientation for our environment tab, except there's not as much control. And we could always control this with a function. You can see we can extract a majority of these different options and control those uh, with different types of nodes. And then we can adjust that overall position 
uh, just by adjusting the amount of degrees. So basically, uh, which angle and which side is this material going to show up on, uh, dependent of our orientation. So basically, if we compare this to the environment tab, uh, this is our orientation tightness, and then this is our actual orientation amount. And we can take a look at the render for this and really see that showing up on each of the specific areas. And we can adjust those settings however we want. Uh, maybe we could decrease our influence a little. And we could see more of a, a blend between the two surfaces. Uh, but we can also change a couple of other things. If you go down to the lower left, we can see we have an altitude range. And now this is basically connected to our influence of altitude. Uh, whether or not we'd like a global, an absolute, or a per object. And this is very similar to the settings we had in the environment tab, uh, where we can set whether or not we'd like to base it on meters and actual units, or just an overall percentage. And if we take a look at the right, we have a coordinate system, which is our world orientation or object orientation. Uh, by default, it's set to world, but if you are going to be manipulating your object, you might want to change it to object orientation. If you're going to be rotating it, moving it, and you still want the materials to appear in the exact same places where they are. Uh, because with world orientation, if you rotate around your terrain, then your actual position and mapping of your materials will uh, be affected by that. And while we we're taking a look at that soil, uh, we could go ahead and click and the actual soil texture itself, and we saw how the lines were moving across. Well, if we wanted those to maybe be facing a different direction, uh, we can go to the Effects tab uh, within the actual simple material of the soil, and we can set a rotation value uh, either on the X, Y, or Z, depending on uh, the position. And that way we could move our lines that we had without actually affecting the surface at all. So that's just another uh, cool thing that we have with those uh, different effects options. But what we can do now is actually add another distribution function. And this will adjust our blending between our surfaces that we have controlled by the influence of environment. And we'll change that to a fractal. And we'll do 0.2 for all wavelengths. Increase our roughness and our gain. Click OK. And now it's the majority of this material is going to be controlled by our influence of environment. Uh, but now we have the ability to also adjust how we want the blending to be around the edges. So when we don't have influence environment on, uh, then we're just going to see directly this function. Uh, but if that is on, uh, then we're gonna majorly going to see the influence of environment, but our edges will also be affected by this distribution. And let's just take a look at something else we could do. If we go ahead and select our chip material, and let's say we wanted to mix this uh, the same way we mixed uh, these current two materials, we could easily just change this simple material to a mixed material. And now we have a blending between material 1 and material 2 still, but our material 1 is also a mixed material. So we can also set influence of environment and distribution and set up a function. And we can also load in just that second material. So I'm just going to load in uh, another material that I'd like to mix together. And we can choose uh, any one of these. And I'm going to select our gray marble and click OK. Now if we notice, we can also see that gray marble is another mixed material. So it's combining our original uh, chip material along with this gray marble that happens to be another mixed material. So we have several mixed materials all being combined. And if we want, we can adjust our distribution now between these two materials. So we can either adjust our slider or we can use a function, or we can use the influence of environment. And now if we take a look, uh, just by turning that on in the default settings, 
uh, we can notice that new material, the gray marble, showing up, along with our chipped areas still showing through. And we can adjust the influence of our slope and our altitude and our orientation if we like, and then its overall position. So there's a lot we can do. Uh, we can just combine tons of materials on top of each other uh, to create some really neat looking surfaces. And if I wanted to too, I could still add uh, additional layers to this that are simple materials. And if we go down to the bottom and select our soil, uh, we can add another layer. We can just select our yellow and gray layers. And now that's also going to show up in our material. So we can see this new value that we have. And we just have the ability to add all of these different options. And our soil is currently a simple material along with these other two that we just added, where we have the soil and the yellow gray that we just added. So we can also adjust the alpha boost for this. And we even have the environment settings now uh, because these are single materials within a simple material layer. So we can adjust the environment, we could always adjust our altitude range, we could do our slope range, orientation tightness, and just start to mix everything together. But keep in mind, this is still only showing through where it is allowed to show through uh, because of our influence of environment within that mixed material. And it's also uh, very important to keep in mind your mapping modes because each one of our different materials can have its own specific mapping mode. So if you want something to be cylindrical or spherical uh, in the way uh, certain bump maps are produced or color maps, you could easily change those different mapping modes within this entire material. And we could also, if we want to break this down a little bit more and see exactly which surfaces were which, we could turn on our specific colors and now we can see exactly where the chip is showing up. We can just see that green showing through. Turn that off. We can take a look at that new surface, that yellow and gray, and see where that's showing up. And we really don't see a whole lot of that one. We take a look at soil. And we can see those purple areas showing up. So there's a lot you can do uh, when using both mixed materials and simple materials and also using them together uh, because we have some really great options with our influence environment and also our environment tabs for our single materials and you just end up with a extremely large amount of control over exactly where you want your materials to be